Here we are for Planet Omar, chapter seven. I thought I was gonna get through the day without any problems. Until lunchtime, that is. Daniel bounded up to Charlie and me and said, the new kid and the weird kid sitting together. Nice. He said nice in a different way to people normally say it. I wondered if it was sarcasm. But my sarcasm detector is not very good. I get confused when people say things upside down. I tried to figure out if actually Daniel wasn't as bad as Charlie had warned and he did think it was nice that we were sitting together or if he was being mean because it obviously wasn't very nice of him to call Charlie the weird kid. Anyway, mum and dad always say to think about things before blurting them out. I could feel Charlie trying to think of what to say too. He was taking air into his lungs rather deeply as if he was preparing to say something and then opening his mouth and closing it, but nothing came out. I think we were both silent for a super long time, which seemed to make Daniel very cross and he shouted, idiots, before he walked away. When he was gone, Charlie said, see, he's always horrible to me. Why? I asked. Did you two have a fight about something? No, he just hates me for no reason. I think he hates the whole class, but he hates me the most. Charlie looked so sad and so small, and I couldn't help putting my arm round him, which made Charlie look at me and smile his toothy smile. And when mum picked me up later, I told her all about my new friend. I saw her breathe a phew. I guess she was worried about how good or how not good my first day would be since I was so nervous. I also told her that I like Mrs Hutchinson and her amazing changing hair. Mum told me about her day too. It sounded like she'd had a great time at her dream job, poking at microscopic stuff with fancy equipment. And on the way home, she'd passed a chocolate shop, so she bought some for our neighbour to say hello properly. Thankfully, she'd brought one of those fancy adult chocolate boxes with lots of dark chocolates in, which are so yuck, I didn't wish the box was for me instead, which I normally do when we have to give chocolates to other people. I thought we could pop round when we get home. Okay. I said slowly, remembering how grumpy the neighbour had been last time I saw her. We picked up Mariam and the little human thing we call a brother, who always comes home from nursery with half of his lunch down his jumper. Mum had to knee to knee her up before we popped over next door because she's embarrassed to have mucky kids. She even said to me, wait, let me run my hair, uh, my fingers through your hair. Ha <laughs> Mum says things the wrong way round when she's hurrying. You mean run your fingers through his hair, said Mariam, because she likes to correct people. Yes, yes, that, said Mum. And she marched us all over and took a deep breath and rang the doorbell. We waited. Nothing. We waited some more. Nothing. So I reached forward and rapped on the door really loudly a few times. Why did you do that? Mum hissed like a quiet, angry snake. What? I shrugged. Maybe the doorbell's not working. Well, it's rude, hissed snake mum. And just then the door opened quietly and eerily like in horror movies. And there stood an old lady quite a short one, with lots of white hair and one of those cardigans that all the old ladies wear. My grandmother has one. And we all said hi pretty much together, except Issa, who said, Assalamu alaikum, like he'd been taught to say to our nanny. The old lady was really weird because she just stood there without reacting. She didn't say hello, she just stared. 
Mum explained that we were the new neighbours and the old lady stared. Mum said, we thought we'd come round to introduce ourselves and the old lady stared. Mariam gave me a secret whack on the arm, which was meant to say, OMG, this is so awkward. I gave her a secret whack back, which was meant to say, OMG, I know. And then mum asked the creepy rude next door neighbour what her name was. And just when we thought she wouldn't say anything, she blurted out, Rogers, and then slammed the door. I glanced up at mum. She looked like one of those helium balloons that hardly has any helium in it at all. Chapter 8. For a few mornings as we left for school, my mum asked me if I'd done my doas. Mum is absolutely obsessed with having a routine that we stick to every morning. It's a bit like one of her science experiments. My parents do their doas whenever they think of something they want to talk to Alar about. I sometimes wonder if other people see a Muslim's lips moving and think they're secretly casting a spell or just talking to themselves when actually they're just doing one of their duas. There are duas for everything. Eating, sleeping, waking up, protection, knowledge, leaving the house, coming back into the house, basically anything you can think of. I used to forget them sometimes. But now I was making sure I did them as soon as I woke up, especially the prayer for protection. Because Daniel was getting meaner every day and I felt like I needed all the help I could get. He had started to follow Charlie and me around the playground at lunch times. Um, some, sometimes he wouldn't say anything, but he would do lots of staring and making grunting noises as if he was having really mean thoughts. And once he charged at us like a rhino and then started laughing like mad because it made Charlie jump. Minus Daniel, school was getting to be quite all right, especially since Charlie and me were becoming super best friends. We laughed at all the same things and we even wished for the same things like, like getting an Xbox and more screen time to go on it. This was starting to make up for how much I missed my friends when back at my old school. I was still a bit worried that they might be forgetting about me. But Dad said we could all get together in the holidays. Mrs Hutchinson was really nice too. Every time she saw me in the mornings or when she walked past my desk, she checked on me and gave me a wink. Not all the lessons were fun, obviously, but whenever we did something creative, she got really enthusiastic and her curls were happy and bouncy. It made me wonder if maybe she could imagine the things the way I did or if she's just like all the other adults. One afternoon, when we were doing an art lesson about Picasso, Mrs Hutchinson was so excited about how he made everything abstract that her curls started dancing with joy. She asked us to paint self-portraits just like his. Charlie and I were having loads of fun, giving ourselves colourful triangle noses and weird shaped eyes. And when Daniel walked past our desk and sent the dirty water pot tumbling onto my painting, oops, clumsy me. And there he was again with the upside down talking. It definitely wasn't an oops moment. It was a, hey, let's ruin Omar's painting on purpose moment. Charlie's mouth dropped open in surprise and my heart took a little dip as if it was falling into a different and less comfy place in my chest. 
it seemed like Charlie could tell exactly how I was feeling because he leaned in to whisper, he's just a big frog spawn head. I bet you can paint a new one even better and gave me the biggest toothy grin I'd seen yet. I imagined what Picasso looked like. I wondered if he looked like some of his paintings all out of shape but happy. Happier than all the other paintings from the old days. And then I thought, what if some kid had ruined Picasso's painting at school one day, which is why it came out all different and weird and that's what made him famous. So I took my paintbrush, I grabbed it like it was alive, like it was the first time I'd ever held a paintbrush and I painted. And when Mrs Hutchinson saw my work, her curls almost rose to the ceiling. Omar, Omar, she said, you did this? Yes, miss, it's, wow, it's brilliant. Daniel's face was red like the beetroots my dad will never eat. And he passed me a note that said, watch out. And when mum came to pick me up, he stared at us both as if we were someone's old chewing gum that he had accidentally touched under his desk. I almost pointed him out to her, but then I remembered how relieved she'd been that I thought school was okay, so I kept quiet. Sometimes though, I think my mum magically knows when someone in her family needs cheering up, because that evening she announced she was making biryani. And biryani is my all time favourite food. It's hard to make and mum says scientists with full-time jobs don't have time to make it every week like I had asked her to. Mum always opens the French doors to the patio when she's cooking no matter how cold it is outside because she can't stand the house to smell of food. Homes are meant to smell of nothing she says. Not fish, not samosas, and not smelly socks. And not even weird artificial air fresheners. And since the door was open, I stood there with my giant bubble kit to see if I could make a bubble bigger than me, like it said on the packet. I could see our next door neighbour, the horrible Mrs Rogers. She was outside poking around at her weeds with one wrinkly hand and holding her phone with the other. And after a few minutes, we heard her say loudly, John, the neighbours are frying smelly onions again. Oh, I'm with her on that one, joked Dad, who hates it when the smell of frying onion and garlic gets in his clothes. I know, I know, we don't want to give her another reason not to like us, said Mum. And then she held Dad's arm like she does when she's going to tell him a really good idea. Let's send her some, she'll love it. I know it gets really stinky when the biryani is cooking, but seriously, it's so yummy, it's worth it. I couldn't believe that mum was being so nice after the way Mrs Rogers treated us when we took her those chocolates. Why did she deserve some of our delicious dinner? And to make it worse, mum and dad made Mariam and me take it round to her house. She took ages to open the door as usual. And when she finally did, we tried to give her the container and she just said, spicy food? No, thank you. And closed the door. Sheesh, said Mariam. You'd think we were trying to poison her. Chapter 9. 
Mum and Dad were so happy that I was getting on well at school that they said I could invite Charlie over. They obviously didn't know the bit about me not actually getting on well at school. 100% because Daniel made most days 40% bad. Well, depending on how much he felt like a big, huge grump that day, he sometimes made them 60% bad. I wondered why he was worse on some days and I imagined him walking to school and slipping on rotten apples. And if you've ever seen a rotten apple, you'll know that they're really sludgy and soft and can make you fall right down if you ever step on one, even more than a banana skin. So the more rotten apples he slipped on, the worse he felt and the more mean he was. That could be it. There had to be something. Charlie was mega excited about coming over. I asked him if he wanted to have pizza and he said yes, which is what I knew he would say because every kid loves pizza. Unless they're allergic to cheese, like my cousin Pfizer, who does lots of farts and get bad tummy aches if she eats it. Charlie told me all about the flavours that he hates tasting on food, but luckily none of them are on pizzas. Peanut coconut, banana, cinnamon, coffee. Charlie was very polite to my mum and dad when he came over. He said extra pleases and extra thank yous and he smiled an extra lot. I've been hearing so much about you, said mum. Oh, thank you, said Charlie. It's so nice to have you over and you can come any time you want. Oh, they were being so cheesy. I imagined them as blocks of cheese, the holy kind that they draw in cartoons, but which I've never actually tasted. Mariam decided to hang about near us and show off like she always does. The weird thing about it was that Charlie actually liked her. She even came to play football with us in the garden. She used to play football normally, but recently she started giggling a lot and celebrating with loud yays. It's super annoying. Charlie didn't seem to mind though. He laughed right along with her the way he does with me, but not really with many other people in the class. All this laughing made Mrs. Rogers come into her garden to investigate. She must have been on the phone because she was talking to the person called John again. I can hear the neighbours. They're being noisy again, John. She said it very loudly. I mean, really, why can't they play quietly like good children? I can't take this much, this much more ridiculous noise. We all looked at each other, suddenly silent. We couldn't see her properly over the fence, just the top of her white hair. And then we burst out laughing and we ran inside to get our pizza. And that takes us up to chapter 10. I wonder what's going to happen with this neighbour. I wonder if she'll get to like them at all. Mm -hmm. We'll have to watch how she changes as we go through the story. I hope she changes. All right. Bye bye.